What a, an unbelievable evening this has been. And uh, yes, as the introduction mentioned, I've spoken in a few places and seemingly I shouldn't be too nervous about this. This is right at home. This is, this is 25 minutes from my house. <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of awestruck by the job they gave me. We're celebrating the Rebbe's 120th birthday, and they told me to speak about the Rebbe in less than 10 minutes. I don't know how to describe anyone's life, a life, a, a person's life, in 10 minutes, let alone someone who was and continues to be larger than life. So I'll tell you what I, what I decided to do. We're, we're in the Cradle of Aviation Museum, in case the people watching online don't know. We're in the IMAX theater, Cradle of Aviation. And amazing, it's actually very breathtaking here. So I wanted to talk about uh, aviation history, if that's okay with you. Okay, all right. So uh, yeah, we, I have some, uh, brought some visuals. Okay, so this is uh, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, December of 1903. Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers, uh, flew their first flight. For, for ages, human beings had looked to the skies and seen the birds fly and dreamt of human flight. And it was an impossibility. It was fantasy until that fateful day. And their plane flew all of 12 seconds. 12 seconds. Now, the same time this was happening in North Carolina, a little boy was about a year and a half old. He was born in Imperial Russia, Tsarist Russia, the son of Rabbi Levi Yitzchak and Rabbi Tzinchana Schneerson, great Jewish leaders, proud Jewish leaders, descended from a long line of Jewish leaders. And apparently they raised their young son, Menachem Mendel, to dream, to dream big, to think big. And, and how do we know this? Because in a very rare glimpse that the Rebbe once revealed about his personal life and about his childhood, actually, it's a letter that Rebbe wrote in 1956 to then President of Israel, Yitzchok Ben Tzvi. And the Rebbe actually explains that when he, before he was even taken to Cheder, we're talking about as a toddler, he said, I was already imagining, I'm talk, talking about a, a toddler, I was already imagining a vision of the complete and final redemption of this world. I was already dreaming of and seeing what this world would look like, look like when it was perfected. I, I, want, I want you to understand, this little boy when he was that age, he was hiding in a cellar from the Cossacks who were coming through on a, in a pogrom. And, and as, as his mother, Abtan Khanna, related, he would soothe the other children. They shouldn't make noise. They shouldn't be discovered. And he used to give the, little, the other little children candies, and he would calm them. So this was what the reality was going around him. But this little boy was already dreaming of a perfect world. Okay. 1927. Here we have the Spirit of St. Louis, famous airplane flown by Charles Lindbergh. Actually, it took off about a mile from this very spot. That's why this is one of the reasons why this is the Cradle of Aviation. And that was the first successful solo transatlantic flight. Now, a year later, the Rebbe would marry his partner in life, Rebetzin Chayamushka. Rebetzin Chayamushka was not only the daughter of the Rebbe's Rebbe, but she had been her, father, her father's uh, confidant and had power of attorney. During the darkest days of Stalinist oppression, Rebetzin Chayamushka was actually running much of the operation underground for her father. And she married the Rebbe, and they uh, built a home together. They did not have biological children, but in many ways an entire generation are their sons and daughters. 
Okay, let's go to the, uh, the jet age, modern aviation. Yeah, okay, now planes are going very, very fast. This is the modern era. And at this point, 1941, the Rebbe comes to America. And in America, the Rebbe is, settles in Brooklyn, and he's working for his father-in-law, and he is managing, directing the three large organizations which were put together to, as the framework for Chabad activities in America, America's Linyoni Chinuch, Machne Yisrael, and Kohos. And uh, things are now becoming uh, more official. It's a whole operation, and there are representatives all over the country, all over the world, affiliates. The Shluchim are, are spreading out, starting to spread out. Next, uh, we come to, uh, what's the next picture I brought? Oh, yeah, uh, breaking the sound barrier. Yeah, I think that's Chuck Yeager's plane there. And uh, that's uh, going faster than speed of sound. Can you imagine that? And uh, around the same time, talking about the in the 1950s now, and the Rebbe is breaking barriers. And he calls it breaking barriers. The slogan of the Rebbe during this time is Ufaratsta, which is God Almighty's charge to our forefather Jacob. He tells him, burst out, break through boundaries. And the Rebbe is breaking through social boundaries and psychological boundaries, telling people, get out of your box, especially American Jewry, which in many ways is apathetic. And, and, and the Rebbe is encouraging every single person who will listen to his voice, Ufaratzta, break out, break through the barriers, reach out to another Jew and uh, inspire them. Okay, uh, next we have, I think we have the space age. Yeah, okay, space age, space race, NASA, man on the moon, all that stuff. And what's happening? What is the Rebbe doing? The Rebbe is reaching for the moon, and uh, things are going at a fever pitch at this point. Um, Shluchim are spreading out more. There are the, the mitzvah, the mitzvah campaigns where young people are standing on the corner, excuse me, sir, are you Jewish? Excuse me, ma'am, are you Jewish? You know, guerrilla Judaism right there on the corner. Would you like to put on tefillin? Would you like to light Shabbos candles? Um, the, the mitzvah tanks, you know, the repurposed RVs, the recreational vehicles that uh, all of our kids refer to as tanks and uh, going out, hitting the streets. Uh, Chabad houses, and, and the Rebbe's tapping into the, the zeitgeist of the counterculture, and the Rebbe says, I'm going to make my own spiritual peace corps. And uh, the Rebbe's sending out young couples to go and turn over the whole world. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, the Concord Jet. Yeah, the Concord Jet. Now, uh, yeah. So I, I mentioned they broke the sound barrier a couple decades earlier. That was Chuck Yeager. That was like elite military. Now regular civilians are breaking the sound barrier, meaning it's becoming democratized. It's becoming something that anybody can do. And they're, they're flying the Concorde from New York to London in, in, I think, two hours and 50 minutes, something like that. Absolutely wild. And as sonic booms are being heard over Long Island, the Deb is making a boom we're talking the same era as the Concord, we're talking in the 1970s and in 1977, the Teldens come out to be the first Schliech couple on Long Island, and they make a boom here in Long Island. Okay, yeah. Okay, now what do I got before the International Space Station? It looks like, okay, fine. All right, International Space Station. Whole new era. I mean, now we're, now we're up to the 90s already. And the Rebbe is tapping into technology, the satellite age. This is uh, a picture here. That's, uh, show the picture of the Rebbe with, from Hanukkah Live. The Rebbe is using technology. The Rebbe is using, using satellites. And the Fabrengans are being, uh, are being broadcast on satellite feed. And there's Chabad.org. You know, before Google, before Facebook, before YouTube, there was Chabad.org already. You, yeah, it's amazing using all of the, the, the advantages that modern technology are giving us. Just absolutely like sci-fi, but it's not sci-fi, it's really happening. Okay. Now, we know that in 1994 the Rebbe passed on. 
But I want to explain that the Rebbe's vision, the Rebbe's dream, the, the dream of that little boy, of a perfect world, that dream did not stop. The dream only kept growing. Because you see, it was always part of the Rebbe's dream that this was not about him, this was about you. I'll tell you, the Rebbe didn't just have belief in an infinite God. The Rebbe had belief in the infinity of you. So now, go ahead. This picture is from a month ago. A uh, breakthrough in aviation. That is an entirely commercial crew, civilian crew, going to the International Space Station. And I should add that the captain of that entirely civilian crew is a nice Jewish boy by the name of Eitan Stiebe. And when he spoke live from the International Space Station, he spoke in Hebrew. So now we're living in an era where civilians can go buy a ticket to the moon, <laughs> to Mars. Why not? What did the Rebbe do? The Rebbe empowered his emissaries, and not just his official emissaries, every single one of us. The Rebbe's vision lives on through us. This is just the shluchim. That's not the shluchos, okay? <laughs> and, and those are just the shluchim who made it into the picture. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, yeah. Now, now we're talking about the current day, and we have 4,900 shluchim couples in over 100 countries all over the world. Okay, and that's how the Rebbe's vision continues. So here's what I want to explain to you. When the Rebbe was born, no one had flown. The Wright brothers hadn't even gotten off the ground for their little 12-second flight. It was a dream. It was impossible. It couldn't be done. And today, as we celebrate the Rebbe's 120th birthday, civilians are buying tickets into outer space. The same exact revolution happened in Judaism with the Rebbe's vision, the Rebbe's dreaming, the little boy who was hiding from the Cossacks but wasn't afraid and dreamt of a perfect world where every man, woman, and child would know God and see the truth and live in peace and prosperity and safety and health. I'm telling you, what was science fiction once upon a time is reality today. We see it with our own eyes. It's undeniable. Just want to tell you one more thing. As I was standing outside in the lobby, I uh, asked one of the workers here for the Wi-Fi code. And I don't know if anyone else here asked for the Wi-Fi code. But if you did, you can corroborate. I didn't make it up for this speech. I asked him, what's the Wi-Fi code? He told me, here at the Cradle of Aviation Museum, he said, future is now. Exclamation point. The future is now. We want Mashiach now. That which our people dreamt of, that which they thought was absolute fantasy, that little boy saw as a possibility, as a reality. As a reality. Not just for himself, but for each and every one of you. So if there's something that you think is beyond you, something that you think is too far of a reach, I want to tell you, you got to think big like the Lubavitcher Rebbe. There are no limits today. There's nothing holding us back. Dream big and live big. Put on tefillin. Bring kashras into your home. Bring mikveh into your marriage. Give your children a Jewish education. Take a Torah class. Whatever it is, add something. And that one thing that you add, like Maimonides said, and the Rebbe would say this so many times in Maimonides' name, maybe thousands of times, that one good deed, the next good deed, could be the one to tip the scales for the entire world. Your mitzvah. The future is now.